Hello everyone, it's the COA Connection with Lori and Cheryl. <laughs> Taking Cheryl's place today is Kelly. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, just wanted to say hello and we miss you to everyone. Um, thank you for having me on today. Yay. I'm really excited about this show <laughs> that they've started. Um, we closed 2020 with a grand finale of amazing community support. Um, it's just a wonderful place to be during the holidays, seeing all the donations that come in and being able to connect them yeah, with the community absolutely. and to people that can use them. Um, so we want to thank everybody in the community that helped us and everybody in our staff that helped us get them out. Um, we hope that 2020 with a vaccine being rolled out to see you and be back and doing the fun things that we always do here. We really look forward to that. Yes. I know. Um, until then, we just need to hang on a little bit longer, wear a mask, continue to check in with your friends and relatives, and know that better days are on the way. So, Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Happy New Year to everyone out there. All right. We're going to go over a few things um, before we have our guest speakers today. Thank you. Um, so we're going to go over some things through the newsletter. The first thing I'm going to do is the New Year New Project. So signups are required, and they have started. Um, it's the drive-by and pick up your project on Tuesday, January 19th, at the Senior Center between the hours of 10 and 11 a.m. Kelly, do you want so to hold cute. That up? I so know. Cute. Can't wait to see this one. Cheryl picked this one out. It's a little thermometer snowman. So the fun will begin after you pick that up on Friday, January 22nd at 1 p.m. We're going to do another Facebook Live, and Lake Cam will be here as well. Thank you. Um, we're going to do a live craft demonstration with Lori and Cheryl. And the snowman. Yay, snowman. <laughs> All right. So I know it's winter. There's no snow, though. But Thank goodness. Yeah, I know. At the right? moment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go over just a few of the inclement weather procedures um, for Meals on Wheels. And this is tough. I know. It's a bit different than usual because yes. normally people look for school closings and that's sort of different in every area and school. Yeah. So I'm um, not sure if they're even posting if things are closed. I haven't really noticed. Yeah. I haven't noticed. But so we wanted to make sure they knew. Yeah. Normal yeah. procedures would be for Meals on Wheels. If Middleborough schools or the Freetown Lakeville schools are closed, there'll be no meals delivered on that day. Um, between us and Middleborough, we try and be really proactive. If we know bad weather's coming, there's going to be a storm. Mm -hmm. We usually deliver double meals the day before. So we try. Sometimes a storm may come up unexpectedly. We do apologize. Um, but again, with COVID, it's, yeah. it's, call us. Call us if any question. Yeah, we try to definitely get questions. ahead of it. But um, it And happen. same with the Gatra van. Same rules apply to the Gatra van. If you have a trip planned for that day, um, I would kind of, if it's a doctor's appointment, I'd suggest that you cancel with them at your earliest convenience, and then we'll try and reschedule with you as soon as it's cleared up. I'm not sure if they advertise that somewhere. We could get back to you with that, but if the town offices are, are closed, um, then we're closed, and that might be a oh, new way yeah. to gauge it with the schools being remote, so we can definitely follow up on that. Yeah, we'll have to ask Tracy. Yeah. I wonder if they must advertise on the website. I believe that, yeah, on the website, yes. It's not something you'd probably find in the news, but the website right. would have that. Facebook, yeah. maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could even update that from home if we had to. Mm -hmm. um, Real quick, puzzles and books. We've been getting calls for people that would like puzzles or some reading books. Um, unfortunately, we can't let you in, but we'll do the browsing for you, and we'll absolutely get what you'd like, whether it be a 300 or a 1,500-piece puzzle. We have the bench out front, and we'll put it out there with your name on it. You can come pick it up. Same with books. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them, too. We've had a lot of donations, so yes. we have some new puzzles and a good book um, yeah. selection right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to donate books or puzzles, that is fine, but please call us first. We don't want you to drop it off after hours and it sits out and gets ruined. And we don't want large quantities. Um, you know, a yeah. small amount at a time is good because we have to let it sit for a bit before we can you know, put it out in the book and puzzle room. So definitely call us first. Um, 
Ah, the box lunches. They've been a hit. They have, yeah. They've been a real yeah. good hit. Um, there's one thing I would like to apologize for. In the newsletter, I didn't specify that for the OCES box lunch drive throughs which is the Old Colony Elder Services box lunch we've been doing on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. I did not specify in the newsletter that the cutoff date for each of them for signups is the Wednesday before. So I have to give account, oh, sorry, hit my mic. <laughs> I have to give account to Old Colony Elder Services the Wednesday before the box lunch. So for each of those, there mm -hmm. is a cutoff the Wednesday before. I apologize. Um, and this again. has been a pilot program that we just tried through them, um, and it's, it's been a success. So instead of doing it twice a month, you'll be seeing it in the, the next newsletter, but we're going to do it four times a month, like every Tuesday, starting the month of February, because yes. um, they've been such a success. So I'm um, glad that you like them, and we'll keep them coming. Yay. And yeah. I think that we've decided they can sign up for all of them at once. Yes. And what um, we're doing in the office is the morning of the drive-by, we're doing a quick all call just yep. to jog your memories and remind you you got a box lunch waiting here for you. Um, so the next one is Tuesday, January 12th. Again, signups for that are over, but just a reminder. And the one after that is Tuesday, January 26th. So if it's on... January 26th, then you have to let us know by the Wednesday before, the Wednesday previous, if you want to sign up. Um, yeah, so, and you know what? Lastly, before we have our first guest speaker on. Oh my gosh, I used too many staples. Um, virtual bingo has started. So real quick, this week's bingo numbers on Monday were I-20 and G-60. Again, that's I-20 and G-60. And today's virtual bingo was B-13 and O-75. So remember, if you signed up for virtual bingo, get out your cards, mark it off, and the first one to call us and say bingo <laughs> is a winner. <laughs> All right, so Kelly, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me Tons today. Of fun, right? Oh, yes. It is yeah. fun. <laughs> Don't want to miss Cheryl, out. Yes, we, we miss Cheryl. You, but we are so glad we got Kelly in. <laughs> All right, so you thank you. Time. And right. uh, next up will be Ed Cullen from Board of Health. Hello. Um, I would like to introduce to you today our first guest speaker, our first guest, guest speaker ever on the COA Connection, and not a better time to have him is Mr. Ed Cullen. He is the Board of Health agent for the town of Lakeville. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, Ed. We've had lots of questions um, from seniors, phone calls. You couldn't even imagine, I, although I'm sure you can. Um, I've prepared some questions that seniors have been calling, inquiring about. Um, if you want to get started, or did you want to? No, go ahead. Um, so the first one is actually, I think everyone's kind of curious, the new virus that they're saying is out. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what's different? So there, is, um, there are several new viruses out. Um, viruses mutate, that's just what they do. Um, that's why you have to get a, a flu shot every, every year because it mutates from the last year. Um, so there's a new strain out. Um, and this, this virus is no different than, than all those others. Um, so there are several. There's one in the UK that seems to be the um, most uh, talked about another one in South Africa and then they just found another one in Brazil. Um, the one in the UK that started in the UK, um, that is here in the US. Everyone knows that um, and it's most likely here in Massachusetts. It has not been found yet in Massachusetts, but we, pretty much everyone who follows this expects it to be in Massachusetts. It was recently found in Connecticut, it was found in New York, uh, in Florida. But the only place that's really widespread in the U.S. is California, in Southern California in particular. Um, what they found there is California did very well at the beginning of the outbreak, but lately they have been having really trouble containing it. So there was always a suspicion that the new variant was there, and recently they just found 32 cases just in the San Diego County. So that's definitely becoming more prevalent in um, Southern California. It's not, we don't have those numbers yet here in the Northeast. But like I said, it just takes some time for this variant to expand. So it is, it is a more um, um, 
transmissible uh, virus, it's not more deadly. Um, so the, the one change between them is just, it's easier tra to transmit. Now, the reason so many people are concerned about that is because although it doesn't, it's not more dangerous, you don't get a more se severe case of it because of it, what happens is your hospitals fill up that much quicker. So if your hospitals are filled up, you're gonna have a tougher time. Um, you won't get the same level of care that you will if you go into a, um, a hospital that's only running at 60% capacity. Those hospitals, you're gonna get a much better care. Once the hospitals start to fill up, the quality of care goes because now you have one nurse um, covering more patients. So there is a risk there, but the actual um, virus itself is not more deadly. Um, the other thing with the new virus, um, um, a lot of questions people talk about is the vaccines. Are they effective? Um, the preliminary data is yes, the vaccines are effective against the new uh, variant. Okay. Um, they just did Pfizer. Now, when they do these um, vaccines to begin with, they're tested against a number of mutations. So the Pfizer was tested against 15 different mutations. Now, this, they just finally tested it against the UK um, version, which is the 16th, and it's, it is effective against oh, all those. Right. So that's the good news. Um, what they're worried about there is there is one type of treatment called a monoclonal antibody. Um, now, the vaccines are polyclonal, where, so they're tested against several different ones, but the monoclonal, it's mainly just one. So they're saying that treatment may not be as effective as the other ones, but there's still a number of treatments they have that they can use. So, you know, if, if you were in the hospital, um, it's not like you just get one treatment and that's it. So there's a number of treatments out there, but that is a concern. Um, and like I said, and the, the main thing right now is the numbers right now in, in Lakeville in particular, this is probably the most riskiest time since this pandemic started in Lakeville. We have more cases. We get over um, sometimes up to 10 cases a day, over oh, 50 wow. a week. Probably we have had half of our cases just in the past month. That, so it is very, very expanding. Lakeville was kind of spared the initial outbreak in uh, March and April, but we're, we're getting it now. And I think most people know that. Most people know someone who has either had it or is quarantining or something like that. So this is a very risky time anyways. Even if the new variant is not here, it doesn't mean they say, okay, it's not here yet, it's still safe. No, this is a very risky time, mainly because of the holidays. We're still in that holiday surge um, because although the holidays have passed us, a lot of the people who contracted it on Christmas or New Year's, they're just experiencing now, especially the New Year's. It takes about five or six days to come out. So, but what happens is that one person who catches it goes back to their household and gives it to three or four members of the family. Majority of the spread is actually in the household because one person goes out, goes to the household, gives it to the other three family members. So those three family members don't probably know they have it at this point. Right. So they're going to work, they're doing a lot of things, and that's the risk. So that's how it spreads. So even though the, 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 um, someone may have caught it back in, on New Year's, the actual peak of the New Year surge Will probably will not be till the third or fourth week in January, oh, wow. and that's so. These that's next scary. couple weeks are going to be are really tough. These, like I said, these will probably be the worst couple weeks yeah. since the pandemic started. Now, after that, after the holiday surge, we're hoping most people stay, start to minimize their activity and things like that. So, hopefully, by February we can get these numbers down. That's a hope. But we know that the next two weeks are going to be bad. Wow. That's that's not a big surprise to anyone. Wow. We all know it's coming. And it's, it's been coming, we've seen it over the past couple of days, and we're gonna see it over the next couple of days. It's not a shock to us, we're, anyone who's following the, the numbers and the cases, they know this is coming. So anything you can do in the next couple of weeks to limit your activity, or if you do have to go out, make sure you're wearing a mask, make sure you're social distancing, it's gonna make a big difference. Because like I said, this is the most critical pairing, critical two to three weeks in, in this pandemic since back in March. This, we're in it now, so this is the riskiest time. So take, um, try to take as many precautions as you can. And it's so difficult. I found the other day I was out grocery shopping, had to go grocery shopping. I'm loading groceries in the truck. I had an itch in my eye and I touched my eye. And it's just that easy, like touching the face. You have to keep your hands hmm. 
Washed, and, cleaned. Yeah, and things like that. Even um, there are services that deliver groceries. If you feel uncomfortable going to groceries, have them delivered. You know, they drop them off right at your door. You Absolutely. pay. You pay through there. There's a lot of options out there. So try to think of those. And like I said, try to limit your activities as best you can. And any definitely any social um, social engagements you had, just think of canceling those or postponing them to a safer time. And for the seniors too, even if your family's picking your groceries up and doing your groceries for you. At this time, if you can have them just drop them outside your house and maybe not come in, you know. Yep, that's a smart idea. I know they think they're limiting their exposure because they're just dropping groceries off. But if this is a, a high point, we have to really protect ourselves, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Scary. Um, so I do have some vaccine questions for you, Ed, as well. I know there are two vaccines available. Um, Pfizer, am I saying it right? Moderna? Yep. Is that the other? Okay. Um, do either of them, and tell me if I sound silly, but do they have the live virus? Does that? No, um, it's not silly, and no, they don't have the live virus. Okay. Um, so they're both are mRNA viruses, um, and what the, you cannot get, um, like other, um, your typical flu vaccine, that has a live virus in it, so people are always more concerned about getting it from there. But on these, there's no possibility of you actually getting the virus. There is no live virus in there, and there's no possibility possibility of you contracting coronavirus Excellent. from that, the vaccine. Yeah, that's been a question that's been very common. And then um, I know I've had people concerned about side effects. Is it too early to know all the side effects? Do we know if there are side effects? No, there, there are definitely side effects, and that's a good question. We want to let everyone know. So, yes, there are side effects. They, everything from headache, soreness, tiredness. Uh, muscle pain, um, and the both of the viruses are two-shot vaccines, uh, whereas you get one and then you get the other um, several weeks later. The Pfizer vaccine you get three weeks later, the Moderna vaccine you get four weeks later. Um, this is important because the second shot is when you get the most side effects. So the first shot, it is possible to get side effects, but it's more common on the second shot. Okay. And it's very important on these vaccines as well. They're different from the, your typical flu vaccine because there are two shots. That's one of the difference between an mRNA vaccine is they need two shots to do it. So you do build um, immunity after your first shot, but not, it takes a while because most people think, oh, I got the vaccine, I'm good. Yeah. Your first 10 days, you're not really going to have any immunity. Um, after one month, yeah, you have some, but to get to that 95%, which is very good for a vaccine, yeah, that's, that's an excellent um, um, immunity for a vaccine, you don't get there until the one week after the second shot. So for the Pfizer vaccine, that's four weeks after your first shot. And for the Moderna, that's five weeks after your first shot. So even if you get the vaccine, you still have to take the precautions until, um, until you get one week after that second shot, and then you can um, start to let up. And now, let me ask you this, would you still, even after the second shot, would you still recommend masks when people are, are going out? Because not everyone's getting the vaccine. Makes sense to still wear masks? Or? De yeah, definitely. Okay. Because like I said, 95% is great, but it's not 100. Right. You know, so definitely you still want to take precautions. Um, you can do more, obviously, if you are vaccinated. But yeah, if you can still wear a mask and, and you know, um, you, it's, it's, it, it, it helps everyone. Like I said, wearing a mask, you're not just protecting yourself, you're protecting everyone. And then wearing a mask is how we get back to normal. Getting a vaccine and wearing a mask. These are our two tools to getting back to normal. Okay. So we should be doing both. So you had answered one of my questions. So I'm going to go past this. Um, so now you're saying Pfizer, after three weeks, you get a second shot, and the Moderna is after four. When you get your first shot, are you then going to be told when to come back for the second? Or is this something that each person has to keep track of and make an appointment on their own? I just don't want people to forget or miss their time frame, if that makes a difference. No, that's a good point. And, and unfortunately, they are um, both, they're both three weeks and four weeks apart. So you can, if you're going on a Tuesday, just think, okay, three weeks from um, this Tuesday, I got to go back. Or, actually, it, for most people in Lakeville, it'll be the Moderna vaccine. Okay. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine is available, but it's in more of in the big city, more of the urban areas. Um, the ones in Lakeville, you're probably going to get the Moderna. That's not definite. Definitely check when you're getting it. Make sure you get know which one you're getting. But yes, you should make the appointment right then. You should talk to the person there and say, okay, I'm coming back at this time, at this date, and I'm going to get my second shot. Okay. 
Um, so that just triggers another question for me. Is there a reason why a town like Lakeville would get Moderna and Pfizer would be in a more city? Is it just the amount of vaccines that they have? It, it's or? more that with the storage and um, um, shipping. Um, so when the M Moderna comes, you have to get 975 doses. You can't buy you can't buy 100 doses of Moderna. It's just the way they're they're packaged and the way the thing. Also with um, Pfizer, you you have to the the storage is extremely difficult. It has to be a special ultra cold freezer, uh, minus 94 degrees. Most oh, wow. places don't have that. I don't think there's any place in Lakeville that has that, so it won't be here. Whereas Moderna, you have your typical freezer and you can store them. And you can get the Moderna in doses of, um, the bottles are 10, but you, you normally order at 100. So if someone can t order 100, take out a bottle, one bottle of 10 and keep the rest in the freezer and still conduct their business. Oh, Whereas okay. oh, with right. Pfizer, it, you really need to be doing a lot and that's why they're saving them for the urban areas. Yeah, absolutely, makes sense. Or large hospitals as well. Um, so I'm looking at my questions. Do you know how or where Lakeville will be administering the vaccinations yet? Do you have any time frame or? We have rough time frames. We don't have exact dates. Um, right now we're in phase one, we're right about the middle of phase one. Um, so first responders should be getting vaccinated next week. And first responders are right in that middle of that pack. So after first responders, they still have other um, home health aides and um, other types of things. And they're just other medical workers in general. The, the, the high risk medical workers were vaccinated first and then we still have the lower risk medical workers. Now most seniors, um, they won't be vaccinated till phase two, unless you happen to be a doctor or something like that, you're probably not gonna be vaccinated until phase two. Phase two is expected in February. Now the exact date is February. We don't actually have that yet because we are, obviously we have to complete phase one before we go to phase two. But the assumption is um, probably middle of February. Okay, and can I ask you, how are the seniors in town gonna to get notified um, that the vaccine is ready and where to go. How, how do they find out about this? Yeah, so prior to phase two, there'll be a big media blitz. It'll be on the TV, it'll be on the radio, it'll be on social media. Um, we're trying to, we're gonna let as many people as possible know this is out there. So odds are you will know. And if you don't, you can always call the COA, you can call Absolutely. the Board of Health. Um, we'll have it on our website. Uh, we'll have as much information as out there as, as necessary. Um, now, and that's important because you need the location. So the location still is not um, set yet. And like I said, that gets set when we, when we actually get the vaccine and we say, okay, now we have it. So we're going to give it out on this date. Okay, you know? gotcha. Yeah, so we'll definitely keep in touch because we can put it on our website as well, put it on Facebook, help get out there when everything's ready to go. Um, and I'm assuming, and this is just assuming, it wouldn't be here though because it's too small of an area or... Do you need a larger facility to? It, it depends. I mean, there'll be, when we say the, we, there will be vaccination clinics. Most of them will be drive-through. Um, you did have a great um, flu vaccination clinic here and that worked very well. Yes. So depending upon the numbers, um, that's where we do it. We know we, do, we are going to be doing large ones at the high school because that has the largest parking lot. Yeah. Um, for the smaller ones, we may choose other parking lots and do them over several days. Um, that hasn't been determined yet, but that, that is one possibility. Okay. Um, okay. Um, there's another thing on the phase two that I didn't mention. Go ahead. Um, so the people at the beginning of phase two are the people over 75 or people with two comorbidities. Um, so they will be getting near the beginning and middle of February. Now, the rest of the seniors are also in phase two, but they're at the end of phase two. So the seniors who are between 65 and 74 and who do not have any serious health skin, They'll still be in phase two, but they'll probably be four to six weeks after the, the first part of phase two. So there's a big difference there. So you need to find out which one you're in, whether you're healthy or whether you're over 75 or you have these um, comorbidities and let your doctor know that too. Because if your doctor says, hey, you're in the beginning, you need to get up in that line. And then so when we start putting out the information that, okay, the, the beginning of phase two has started, you want to be in that category because like I said, you could end up waiting six weeks for, mm -hmm. to fall into that second category because there's a lot of um, essential workers who are in the middle there and that's going to take some time to vaccinate them. All right. Um, I just thought of another question. Sorry, I thought this no, would be no. a little easier for you. So should people with the two 
comorbidity, should they get a note from their doctor? I mean, are you just going to take people's words saying, I, you know, I need the shot because I have this and this, or do they require a doctor's note? Yes, you should definitely call your doctor okay. and, and f first find out if you qualify for that. Okay. And then when the time comes, yes, he will be supplying something like okay. that. If you're over 75, it's a little simpler. But those who are under 75 and have comorbidities, yes, you should have some type of documentation that you are, um, okay. have those illnesses. And then where you're saying the 65 to 74 range could be four or six weeks out. So this to me sounds like it's going to be a long process. Correct. Phase two is a lot larger than phase one. I mean, okay. phase one, it's taking some time, um, mainly because we don't have that much vaccine right now. But eventually, once we get into February, a lot more vaccine will be coming out. But we have to vaccinate a lot more people. Right. So and like I said, that will it, phase two is expected to go to, from February to April. So that's a, it's a long, um, wow. it, right. that's over two months uh, period. So whether you're at the beginning of phase two or the end of phase two, it's a big difference. Okay. Um, and this is not like the flu vaccine then because there's a time frame where you should get the flu vaccine because it's more effective. Am I saying this right? You know how there's usually a, a time frame that they would like you to get the flu vaccine, whereas this you can get it at any point and it will be effective a week after the second shot. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, I think we covered anything. Is there anything else you'd like to mention, um, Ed? Or um, Just um, on the shots there, yes, you should get a date um, when you're doing it, but it doesn't have to be exactly that date. If you're two days before or two days after, you can still work it in. Like I said, ideally you want to be exactly uh, four weeks okay. after Moderna shot, but like I said, if it's four weeks in a day, it's still possible. It's still okay. um, the other thing is do not mix the vaccines. If you go in for a Moderna vaccine, make sure you get the second shot as a Moderna vaccine. You cannot get the Pfizer. Okay. Will they give you a card? Do you know how that works yet? They should, they should okay. give you a card with a date um, for you to come back on the second shot. Okay. And that'll probably say which vaccine Correct. they received. Okay. Um, last quick question. Um, if our seniors have questions about COVID or vaccines, um, I don't want to inundate you with phone calls. So... I know you gave me a link today. I already posted that link to our website and I've already posted it on Facebook. Um, Mass.gov, they can look there as well. And if they need to call you or they feel it's important, is it okay to call the Board of Health? Yes, of course it's okay to call the Board of Health. That's what we're here for. Um, but I do recommend using that website because Although you may have one question, if you go on the website, you probably can answer several questions because once you go reading, there's a lot of information there. The other thing with the website is it gets updated twice a week. A lot of information is coming in and it's changing rapidly. So just because you went on last week doesn't mean you know you can't go on again to check it because they like said new information is going on every twice a week. It's updated. So again, you, I advise. I think it's a great resource. Um, like I said, it's on your website. It's yes. also on the Board of Health website. So e either way, however you get to there, it's a great resource. And like I said, there's a lot of information, not just for the question you have, but a lot of questions you, you didn't have. Yeah, and I did look at it, um, and it is really easy to, to manipulate. It's literally a link. Like he said, it's on the Board of Health. It's on the Council on Aging. It's just a link that you click, and it's right there for you, nice and easy. Um, I don't know. All set, Ed? Yep. That was a lot of information. Really appreciate it. Um, I just want to thank you for coming in today. We do uh, appreciate you answering all the questions. Hopefully you are uh, able to ease some anxiety of our seniors. Um, the virus is forever changing and you're doing an exceptional job for the town of Lakeville. We just wanted to say thank you very much. Okay. We well, thank you it. for having me. I think this is a great resource and I hope the people out there um, are listening and, and following your advice as, as well. So, like I said, and don't be afraid to call the Board of Health. That's what we're there for. That's what we get paid for. So don't be, a, be, a, be afraid to call us. But like I said, also use the other resources as well, because sometimes if you call at 9 o'clock at night, we're not going to be there. So right. think about using websites too. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello. So Cheryl and I would like to welcome a familiar face at the Senior Center. Uh, this place would not be the same without you. We're so grateful to have her on our team. This is Lucille Delaire, our outreach worker. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Lucille. Thank Hi. you for being here. Um, first of all, can you tell...
people out there today a little bit about your role here at the Senior Center. Right. As Laurie says, I'm the outreach worker here at the COA. And the goal of the outreach service is to assist this seniors by connecting them to benefits and services that can improve their ability to stay in the community as long as possible. Um, the individuals who use this service are naturally seniors, but it's also their friends, their family, and caregivers of seniors. Um, we can answer most any question, and if we don't have the answer, we can also help you know, Lucille always finds the answer, <laughs> or I help you find the answer. Right, we, we search, we'll hunt, we'll go. We won't up. leave you high and dry, right, that's right, for sure. <laughs> right. So, uh, some of the examples of the calls we get are these uh, I'm experiencing more health problems and just need a little help keeping my home up. Where can I get the assistance and will it cost me? That's one of the calls. That's a lot. My heating bill is becoming too high. Do I qualify for fuel assistance and how do I apply? Another one, I'm caring for my spouse with health, whose health is failing. I need more help with, with their care. Can I get the help? Or um, I'm now needing a, to use a wheelchair to get around and need a ramp to get in and out of my house. Where can I get the help to put a ramp in and is there any financial assistance to help pay for that rent? Yeah. Or, I heard about, a free f the f about free phones. I want to know if I qualify and how do I apply. <laughs> <laughs> so we also, whenever there's an application process, we assist with that. And uh, we have uh, most of the applications here at Lakeville. Oh, we can download these applications to these different programs. Yeah. So if you're having any issues like these, about what services and programs are available to you, call us at the COA at 508-947-7224 and we'll get back to you. Okay. Yeah, very good. All so right. that's a lot, Lucille. You're a busy girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I think the next thing we'd like to talk about is the Senior Circuit Breaker Credit. Right. And I myself am quite eager to hear what you say. Okay. Um, so can you tell us what the Senior Circuit Breaker Credit is? Okay. The, it's the Massachusetts Circuit Breaker Tax Program, uh, and it's, it's for qualifying people um, that are age 65 and over, whose property tax exceeds 10% of their annual gross income, and renters are also eligible for this. Um, a renter will qualify if 25% of their rent exceeds 10% of their gross income. Wow. But I have to say that people living in public housing and subsi subsidized housing are not eligible for this program. Okay, so automatically they're not because... Because they're living in public housing and subsidized. They are getting already getting some form of assistance. Okay, all right. So whether or not you owe taxes, you may be eligible for a cash or tax credit up to $1,150 this year. Even if you do not file for Massachusetts state income. However, you do have to uh, apply to obtain the, uh, this tax credit benefit. Um, you do have to uh, file for the 2020 tax year beginning January, 20, uh, January 2021. Even if you haven't filed? Right. Okay. All right. Okay. So... All right, so that's how we apply. I'm just checking out all my questions here. Um, where can a senior get help preparing their tax return? Okay, so uh, I just want to reiterate about qualifications. Uh, if you're, uh, you have to be 65 on or before December 31st, 2020. I mean, if you turn 65 January 1st, you're not eligible. Really? Okay. You okay. Got, it has all to right. be in the year 2020. Okay. And you have to own or rent in Massachusetts as a principal residence. Oh, so not as a secondary. Right, yeah, that it's gotta be the principal, sense. right. Okay. And your total income does not exceed, for a single person, $61,000 a year. For a married couple filing jointly, $92,000 a year. Or a head of a household, $76,000 a year. Okay, and I'm just gonna interrupt real quick. Sure. I believe um, that we've already discussed with Craig these four, these um, guidelines are going to be, be put, posted, right? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. going to be posted, so yeah. you'll be able to see them. And right. I think what I'll do, Lucille, is um, 
I'll also put them on Facebook, and I'll put them on okay. the website as well. All right, and we'll put it in the newsletter, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we will be having packets, uh, uh, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'm getting ahead. ahead of myself. No, I know. We're getting ahead. Okay. We're having yeah. too much fun. And I have to also add that um, with assessed real estate, um, your evaluation cannot exceed 800, 848000 Okay. Now, um, now as to how... How a senior applies, applies for right. this. To yes, claim the, secret, the circuit breaker credit, you must file a Massachusetts state income tax return, even though you've never done one before, or you haven't done it for several years, and include what they call a Schedule CB, circuit break it credit form. Okay. okay. Um, you can you can file your tax return free by using um, uh, the free filing options at mass.gov forward slash ma free file. Okay. Or you may download the forms at mass.gov forward slash dor slash forms. And if you just go to mass.gov, you know, and you. Uh, Look up the, the uh, state taxes that you'll be able to find those. Oh, forms yeah, and there. on mass.gov, it's actually a really easy site. It is to very work. easy. There's yeah. a search bar, you just yeah. put the words in of what you're right. looking for, and it brings it up. Right. So, very easy. And, and where can a senior yes. get uh, preparing as, your, as to your question? Um, well, any tax prof uh, professional can help. Okay. But you may also qualify for free tax preparation services. Okay. And how do they find out if they qualify well, you're for really that? Right into that? For more information, <laughs> just give us a call. We'll let, we'll let you know where they are at 508-947-7224. Our phones are going to be ringing. <laughs> they will be. <laughs> um, and again, all of this we're going to post on Facebook, on the website. We'll get right. in the newsletter. And Craig's going to, down here somewhere, run a little line that says, you know, the website. Right, right. We'll add all that on. So yeah, you can... absolutely. Wow. Okay. So the circuit breaker, besides being a mouthful, saying it all, yeah, it's, it is. it's a <laughs> lot of work, but is it, um, is it time consuming or is it something that can quickly be done? Well, most tax preparers do know okay. about this. And, and of course, if you use the free service, the AARP, uh, uh, professionals that help with the taxes, uh, it's an automatic, they have a, it's a program that when, when they're taking okay. information on your taxes, it'll calculate whether or not you're eligible for the circuit oh, breaker. Oh, okay, so they yeah. just press a little button, input yeah, the info. Right, okay. right, right. All right, so, well, that was very interesting and informative. Um, next, we want to talk a little bit about SNAP. Right. Which is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program also known as food stamps. Another big mouthful. Another mouthful. Oh, goodness. All right. A little bit about that, Lucille. Okay. Um, can you tell us what the SNAP program is? Okay. The SNAP, SNAP is a federal program that helps millions of low-income Americans put food on the table. SNAP provides nutrition benefits to supplement the food budget of needy families so they can purchase healthy food and move for, towards self-sufficiency. The program is administered by the Massachusetts Department of Transitional Assistance. Transitional Assistance, okay. Wow. Um, how does one qualify for SNAP? Okay, SNAP is, is broadly available to households with low incomes. Uh, SNAP rules and benefit levels are, for the most part, set by the federal level. There is no asset test for most Massachusetts households. Now, to qualify for SNAP benefits, a household, they look at two things. First, your countable gross monthly income. It must be under the federal limit for your household size. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, SNAP is helping people who suddenly found themselves in, an, in the unfam unfamiliar situation of not being able to put food on the table for themselves or their families and has changed the income guidelines. Individuals whose gross income is at or below 200% of the poverty line are eligible. It was 130% prior oh, yeah, to the COVID. 200. Now it's 200%. Wow. So it really is high. So in other words, if you're an individual and you're making, let's say, $2,127 a month or $25,520 a year, you, you may be eligible for the SNAP benefit. Uh, for families of two, $2,873 a month or $34,480 a year. And then for families of three, 
3620 a month or 43440 a year. And again, they do look at your net income. And, that, and the, your net income is determined after allowing certain deductions for shelter, dependent care, and some other expenses. Okay. All right. Now, if you qualify, you will receive an, an EBT card. It's also known as Electronic Benefit Transfer Card, which is loaded with benefits once a month. They automatically transfer money into this, onto this card. Household members may, be, may use it to purchase food at retailers who are authorized to participate in the program. In other words, like Walmart, Stop and Shop, places okay. like that. Yep. Um, households can use SNAP to buy nutritious foods such as breads and cereal, fruits and vegetables, meat and fish, and dairy products. SNAP benefits cannot be used to buy any kind of alcohol or tobacco products or any non-food items like household supplies and vitamins and medi med medications, which yeah. today household <laughs> right. supplies are very important. <laughs> yes, they are. Considering um, the SNAP EBT card can now be used for Walmart and Amazon food deliveries. In the past, before the pandemic, you could not use your, your card to yeah. purchase uh, foods, you know, that are delivered to the home, but now they're allowing it, and they're only at Walmart and Amazon. And I'm curious. That's a really good thing. Um, I'm curious. I, I, I'm not sure if Walmart and Amazon charge a fee for delivery. I, I wonder if it's like EBT, if yeah. they waive a fee. Or... I, I don't know, and that's something that yeah. certainly, if you're going to use your card, you, that's something you, you would ask, ask. You, yeah, definitely Walmart. Ask. Sometimes okay. they have. They say you can. You know, you have. They have a minimum. Okay. Where you don't pay a fee, you know. All right. You, it could be fifty dollars you have to spend in, to, in order to get that in fee away. In order to get it. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. So, very interesting. The guidelines; those will also be posted again, just so everyone knows. Um, how does someone apply for SNAP, and what will they need to apply? Okay. So, there definitely most programs you have to have proof of through documentation. Um, with the SNAP, you need your driver's license. Okay. You need a proof of residency, and usually they'll accept utility bills as you know as a, a source uh, pr of proof, property tax, or lease or rent agreement. Okay. Um, you'll also need proof of income, and usually that's a pay stub, or with seniors uh, the Social Security award letter. And also expenses, they, they look at that too. So you know, again, utility bills, they'll look at property tax, um, homeowner insurance. They'll also under SNAP look at medical expenses like your co-pays and, uh, and your premiums you pay, you pay on medical insurance okay. and prescriptions. Okay. They'll look at that. All right. For the year, for that qualifying yeah, year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now to apply for SNAP benefits, um, you can go to online to dtaconnect.com. Um, you can get a paper application and learn more at mass.gov forward slash SNAP. Or you can call us here at the Lakeville Council on Aging at 508-947-7224, and we will help you. We do have the applications here, and we'll assist you through the application process. Okay. And we in the office will do our best to assist you. But if you would like to speak with Lucille, who we always <laughs> pass things by, check with, and give to her as often as possible because she is the expert. Um, she's here Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. So she's not here the other days. Again, it's just Monday, Tuesday, 9 to 2. And we are super fortunate to have her here those two days. Right, but you can call any time yeah, during oh, the week yeah. and, and they'll, they'll let me know, you know, and I'll get back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow, I think that was another successful, informative segment. Thank you very much. Oh, you're Lucille. welcome. Well, thank you for having me. You're too. very welcome. I just want to add into it because we were talking about food and families in need. While I'm thinking of it, I yeah. just want to mention the food pantry. Right, right. Um, if you're talking to Lucille and you need a little help, you can, um, Definitely ask Lucille about the food pantry. She can put something together for you. You don't even have to talk to Lucille about that. Right. Call us girls in the office. We have a little rundown list of what we have. We don't have um, eggs, milk, like fresh stuff like that, but we have a very well-stocked food pantry. 
We have gotten several mm -hmm. very gracious, um, both monetary and food donations through the COVID pandemic. And we'd love to be able to help you. Don't, I think sometimes people, they're, they feel ashamed or, yeah. or scared. I mean, don't. If you can't come here to pick it up, myself or one of the van drivers will drop it off at your house. It, it's not a problem. Um, please don't be afraid to call. If you think a friend or family member needs help, tell them about our food pantry. Um, that's what it's here for. Right, and we also have the brown bag program here. Oh, the brown here. bag program, yep. Well, yeah, once a month, which it's a collaboration with the food bank, the Boston Food Bank, and uh, it's the last Wednesday of the month. Um, you can sign up, and it's, it's a, a bag of groceries, and sometimes we get chicken, sometimes fruit. Yep, it's, it's fruit, a vegetables, bowl, chicken, right. Fresh meat. Stuff. Um, I just want to say that is something you do have to qualify for, though. We have right, the forms right, here. Right. Um, I can email them to you. We can mail them to you. You can pick them up here outside. Um, just let us know that you're coming for them first so we can have them prepared. Um, so when we say sign up, we don't mean sign up and you automatically get it. Again, you do have to qualify. Right. Um, but, yeah, we can do that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Lucy. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, <laughs> Lucy. We call her Lucy. Sorry. She is so valuable to the senior oh. center. Um, I don't know. I don't think people know how valuable you are oh. to us. Oh, thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. All right. Back to a little more news from the senior center newsletter. Um, ask a lawyer. Attorney Adam Bond of Middleborough is offering free 20-minute consultations to Lakeville seniors. These consultations can be via phone, computer, or in person at his office. His office is located at 1 North Main Street in Middleborough. He can also visit you at home if you're unable to get out. So please give him a call, 508-946-1165, to set up your free consultation. Very nice of him to do that for us. We appreciate it very much. Um, next, just want to let you know, it's not a scam call. APHVC calls have started. This is our Academic Public Health Volunteer Corps. They're doing wellness checks. There are thousands of seniors in Lakeville, and we cannot possibly um, call all of you. So these college volunteers have started making a large number of wellness check phone calls. We have asked them to mention my name, Cheryl's name, or Kelly's name. That way you're a little bit more familiar and hopefully you won't think it's a scam. But they're just calling to see um, wellness, how you're doing during the pandemic. If you need any assistance with anything, they'll get you in touch with us. If there's any way we can help you, it's just... We want to make sure you're being heard, you're being reached, and that you're all doing well. So just so you know, um, these college students come from other states. They will be using their personal cell phones to call you. So unfortunately, it may be a number you don't recognize. Um, we promise you it's not a scam. If you'd like to opt out and not have them call you, please call us at the Senior Center at 508 947 7224, speak with Cheryl and I, and just let us know you'd like to opt out of the wellness calls, and we'll take your name right off the list. It's not a problem. Also, always, always want to remember our veterans agent, Will Corey. He's available every Friday from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Will can be reached at 508-946-8824. Or you can email him at willcorey at lakevillema.org. That's W-C-O-R-E-Y at lakevillema.org. He can help assist you with any um, veterans-related questions. He does a great job for our veterans in town, so reach out if you need to. I miss my partner in crime. We can't chat. <laughs> Anyways, um, a quick note about the Friends Group. I just want to remind you of the two fundraisers going on. I know we're always mentioning this on all of our shows, um, but they do a great job, a tremendous job, raising money for the Senior Center. I just want to remind you that the Brick Campaign is still ongoing, and the Apparel Fundraiser is also still ongoing. 
You can reach the Friends Group president, Linda Yule, by email or by phone. Her email is Linda underscore Yule, and her last name is E-W-E-L-L, -L, at verizon.net, or you can simply give her a call, 508 746 5254. We also have um, all the paperwork that has to do with these two fundraisers, so you can call the Senior Center as well. We can put the information in the mail. We can put it out in the little mailbox we have out front. You can come pick it up, whatever is easiest for everybody. Um, so let's just remember our Friends Group and the two ongoing fundraisers. A shout out to the Friends Group. Thank you so much for all you do. All right, on a serious note, I'd like to speak briefly, I'll be brief, um, about a silent pandemic that's going on during all this COVID pandemic. Um, social isolation and loneliness, for seniors especially. What I'm gonna do, um, let you know, there's a nice article in the January newsletter. There's a pretty good article that you can read about, but what I wanna do is just give some helpful tips that have to do with social isolation and loneliness, how to help you with this. Um, here we go. Take time to talk with family and friends. Take the time, don't think about it. Don't sit on your couch and think about it. Get up and pick up that telephone. You can call family or friends by phone, virtual platform if you're handy with online, email, social media, any way you can do it. Don't think it, do it. It may be the only phone call they get that day. They may need the cheering up. You may need the cheering up. So just do it, make the phone call. Keep up a healthy lifestyle. Eat a balanced diet, exercise, and get quality sleep. The eat a balanced diet. Remember, we have the food pantry. If in need, we can help you. Exercise, online, we have links for exercise classes. And getting quality sleep, well, that's up to you. Go to bed early and get some good sleep. Next, take up a new hobby, something you have always wanted to try. Scrapbooking, photography, how about crafts, um, art, try an art project. I've always wanted to be an artist. I'm just not good at it. But um, try it, any new hobby you've wanted to do. Next, we have praxis, relaxation, meditation, or mindfulness. I was once told, give yourself 30 seconds every day of mindfulness and peace and quiet. Sit quiet 30 seconds. I can't do it right now because I'm doing the program. But try it. Start with 30 seconds. If it works out good, you can clear your mind. Try it for a minute, twice a day. Do it in the morning when you wake up and at bedtime before you go to bed. But just Try some relaxation. With everything on the news and everything going on, it's easy to get frustrated and we want to relax you. Also, if news or social ma media makes you feel fearful or anxious, unplug it, shut it off, change the channel. Um, don't watch it if it's going to upset you. Please, we, we want you healthy when this is all over. If you are socially distancing and feeling lonely because of COVID-19, remind yourself this is a temporary period of isolation. This will not go on forever. As Ed was saying, the vaccines are rolling out. Pretty soon, folks, this will be a thing of the past. And lastly, I want you to confide in family and friends on how you're feeling. If you're depressed, if you're lonely, don't keep it in. Confide in someone. Take part in an in-person or a virtual support group. Again, we have different things like that on the town website. If you go on the town website, you go under Council on Aging. On the right-hand side, news and announcements, I have all sorts of good informational support groups on there. It's also, I believe, on Lake Cam. Anything that we post on our town website, Craig's shaking his head, yes, is also on Lake Cam. So take a peek. All right, here we go. As we wind down, I want you to remember our next COA connection with Lori and Cheryl. 
The program um, will also be Facebook Live because we're doing a craft demo, and that will be on Friday, January 22nd at 1 p.m. We're also hoping, fingers crossed, we might have um, Chief O'Brien from the fire department here. We're still trying to work it out, but we may have him here to do um, a little segment for us. So I just want to say there have been many individuals um, that have given us donations of food, monetary, snacks for us, food gift cards for others. I mean, it goes on and on and on. The list goes on. We have a beautiful little thank you page in our newsletter, and I'd like you all to read it so you can see what's been going on and what we've been doing. And again, if we missed anyone in this thank you section of the newsletter, um, we, uh, we our sincerest apologies. Um, we've got a lot going on. We're trying our best to keep track of everything. I just want to say thank you to everyone for their kindness during the holidays and always. It's much appreciated. Would like to end um, with something Kelly had said to me the other day, kind of struck a chord. I like the way it sounded. Um, she said, we have hope now that soon we will now know more people who have been vaccinated than people who have gotten COVID. Hoping this is true for 2020, any questions, reach out, ask. If not for us, Board of Health, um, we'll all try and guide you the best way we can. I hope you're all having a happy, healthy new year. Hope to see you all back again. And for Cheryl and I and Kelly, um, we'd like to say happy new year and uh, hope to see you again soon, very soon. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Bye-bye.